In a previous tutorial from a few years ago, we went over how you can apply vector textures in Inkscape by using path operations. As it turns out though, there is a more efficient way to accomplish this using a relatively new feature in Inkscape known as inverse masking, and I'd like to share that with you in this tutorial. So to get us started here, the object I will be working with is this text object here that was previously a text object, but I converted it to a path. Now it's important to understand that what we're gonna do in this lesson only works on objects that are vector paths. So if you're working with a text object or a shape that you've drawn with the shape tool, you'll have to convert it to a path first by selecting it and going to path and selecting object to path. And once you do that, you'll be good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is import my vector texture. I'm gonna open my folder and I'm gonna grab the SVG file and just click and drag that onto the canvas. If you wanna follow along with what I'm doing here, I'll put a link in the description to where you could download these textures. And once it's imported, I'm just gonna scale it down and size it up and position it where I would like it to be relative to the subject that I'll be applying it to. So I'm gonna move this on top of it like that. Now, normally what we would do is we would select both of these objects and do a path difference. But the problem with using an object like a texture to do something like that is that this texture consists of thousands of nodes, maybe even tens of thousands of nodes. And if you perform path operations with it, it's gonna slow down your computer a lot. So it's a really inefficient way of doing things. Instead, what we're gonna do is with both objects selected, we will go to object, mask, and we're going to choose set inverse mask. And once you do that, it's going to apply the texture to the object, as you can see there. And if I zoom in all the way, you can see that the vector element has been preserved. In fact, all of that texture in there is negative space. If I were to grab my rectangle tool and draw a rectangle and position that beneath everything, you can see those negative, you can see the black background showing through those negative space areas like that. Now, if at any point you want to remove the texture, the good thing about this, instead of using path operations, is that it's also non-destructive. So you can undo this at any point. You could just select the object and go to object and go to mask and choose release mask. And there you go. Now you're back to your starting point. You have your preserved text object and the vector texture as it was previously. So that is a much more efficient way of applying vector textures to objects using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.